In Sri Lanka, we see how a people-centered approach to technology is making a difference to the lives of the poor and addressing their basic energy needs. This reflects the kind of work intergovernment organizations like UNESCO and NGOs like Intermediate Technology Development Group, ITDG, have been doing. More than 50% of people in Sri Lanka haven't got access to the grid electricity, and it's over 70% in the rural areas. At this test site, a wind turbine is providing enough energy for 22 households. But for long-term success, community ownership is critical, and they formed an electricity consumers association to help with planning, construction, and operation. One of the questions that, that, that we should be asking, what is it good for people? Can the VIF poor afford it? Can they understand it? And can they control it? We're very happy to have electricity. Now we can watch TV and do our housework properly. With lamps, we had very little light, and accidents would happen when children fell asleep doing their homework. The lamp would topple over and cause accidents. Now this doesn't happen, and we can save the money we would have spent on kerosene. It's incredible what they are saying now after getting electricity, and uh, I mean, some people say that children's education has gone up, uh, and that they also feel like that they belong to the society. That some people say that they, they are not alone anymore because they have lights. If wind power is going to take off, local maintenance and manufacture is essential. We have done technical training. So far we have had no problems with the maintenance. Schumacher's message is not just applicable to the so-called developing world, and renewable energy is one area where rich and poor countries alike can make a difference in protecting the environment. I think the potential for wind power in everywhere around the world is so high and it's, it's, it's an it's untapped resource. Mm -hmm.